So I'm very excited. We finally get to talk about differentiation of vectors. And I'm excited for many reasons. Number one, I love it. Number two, we have to do it. This is a vector calculus class. And number three, I know you have the wrong idea about what it means to differentiate a vector. It is simpler than you think it is. So I've been really looking forward to setting you straight, if you pardon my expression. So you're familiar with ordinary differentiation. Ordinary differentiation is applied to a function of one variable. And that's really the only type of object that you can take a derivative of. When you're thinking of a, multivari of a multivariable function, a function of several variables, and you can take partial derivatives, well, a partial derivative is nothing but an ordinary, an ordinary derivative when you pretend that all of the other variables have constant values. So before you take the derivative, you pretty much reduce a function to being a function of one variable. So I'm pausing for a moment to let it sink in. That's the only sort of thing that you can take a derivative of. So when we talk about derivatives of vectors, the only kind of thing that you can take a derivative of, and I won't use the letter v, because that refers to velocity often. So I'll, well, a refers to acceleration. <laughs> What's a good letter? Uh, b is bored. x. None of those are good. Z. Z. Maybe even, no, Z is not good for, for another set of reasons. I should have, no, it has to be a Latin letter. Uh, I should have thought this through. Uh, U. Pretty neutral. U. The only kind of thing that you can take an, a derivative of is something like this. A vector valued function that depends on a parameter. And I also know the concept that you have in your head when you hear a vector valued function. You're immediately thinking Rn, I know that. You're immediately thinking that it's a function that returns an entiple of numbers. Well, no, not in this course. In this course, a vector valued function is a, is a mapping from a parameter to a vector, a geometric vector that we've been discussing. So I'm about to make three points, three related points. Number one, vectors can be differentiated. And initially our discussion will be algebraic. Then we'll make another point that anything that looks like this corresponds to a curve in space and you just can't help it. Whenever you see something like this, it corresponds to a curve. And the final point that I will make is that the derivative of something like this with respect to its parameter corresponds to the tangent vector. Those are three fundamental facts of life. Those are three truths that we will hold to be self-evident. Okay, so very, very basic, fundamental stuff today. So point number one, vectors can be differentiated. In other words, vector-valued functions, and again, I want to reinforce when you hear Vector valued function, you should imagine that to every alpha there corresponds a geometric vector. That's what a vector valued function is. Point number one, vector valued functions can be differentiated. Let's see that algebraically. And I will write down a limit, which I don't often do. But I will write it not for the sake of the limit logistics with epsilons and deltas, but for the sake of showing that whatever it is that you need for the derivatives, for a derivative, vectors have. So the definition of the derivative of f, familiar definition, right? Obviously. That's the foundation of calculus since 200 years after calculus was discovered. I will resist ranting about how limits have very little to do with calculus. Calculus was born and fully developed long before limits ever came into existence. That's a different point. Right now I will take from the limit what I need from it. And it is this. Let's think about what we should be requiring of an object in order to be able to take its derivative. 
What are the elements here? Well, we have to be able to evaluate it for a particular value of a parameter. Well, we have that here. To every value of the parameter alpha, there corresponds some vector. You can imagine it, you can imagine them all coming from the same point, like this, varying lengths. But then we'll also find that our vectors are floating all over the place. And that's fine also. We'll allow them to float, draw them conveniently wherever we want them to be. But then when we're doing subtractions and divisions and vector algebra with them, then it's time to bring them all to the common point. Or do tip to tail or something like that. So we do have that. Given a value of a parameter, we can evaluate a vector. Great. Can we find the difference between two vectors, right? In order to be able to take the derivative, that's required of the object. You need to be able to subtract two neighboring values of the function. We can certainly do it with a function like x squared or sine of x or e to the x. Can we do it with a vector-valued function? If we have v at, al v at some value of alpha and a different value of v at a nearby value of alpha, can we find their difference? I don't really want to draw a picture. First, I want to have this algebraic discussion. Can we subtract vectors? Yes, we can. Good. Now what comes next? Dividing them by a number. Can we take the result of the difference and divide it by a number? Great. Is there another thing we need? Yes, there is. We need to be able to take the limit, a limit. We need to be able to take a limit. What is necessary to take a limit? You have to be limit. It has to do with approaching some value, getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to some value. Mathematicians obviously don't like this idea of closer, 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 closer. So they've invented epsilons and deltas. But that doesn't change the fact that there needs to be a concept of proximity. Are we getting closer to some value? And do vectors have a concept of proximity? That these two vectors are close, and this vector is approaching this one, or these two vectors are not close? And the answer is, of course we do. These two vectors are close to each other. These two vectors are not close to each other. It's the length of the difference that tells us how close the vectors are. And so we can define what it means for one, for a sequence of vectors to approach a limit. So that the distance of the difference gets closer and closer to zero. I don't want to get too technical, I just want to make a point that, yes, for vector-valued things, the concept of limit is just as perfectly defined as it is for numbers. So yes, if you're looking for a, a quote-unquote rigorous definition for what I mean by the derivative of a vector-valued function, out of necessity, I would need to write something like this. There are four ingredients here. Ability to evaluate for a particular value of a parameter, check. Ability to subtract one from the other, check. Ability to divide by a number, check. Ability to find the limit, check. So geometric vectors, by now we're used to them as being mathematical enough and algebraic enough that we can do all of these things with vectors. So if you went for this formal definition, all of the ingredients that we need are present. The question of how we would evaluate it, why we would evaluate it, when, and so forth are still outstanding. That's a different question. And we can do lots of things with sines and cosines that we cannot do with pictures. We have trig identities, exponential identities, polynomial identities, all of those things that we don't have with vectors. That's besides the point. What we need is uh, just all of the ingredients that it takes to take the limit like this. And we do. So I, I believe I have made my point number one, that vectors can be differentiated. And one other thing that I want to mention, uh, which I should have mentioned early on, is that when you hear the word derivative, now in various textbooks you'll find things that I consider to be just a mess. Uh, a 
a derivative with respect to this, a derivative with respect to that, a derivative with respect to a vector. The notation sometimes is terrible, even in the chain rule where you write df dg dg dx, and it looks like you're differentiating one function with respect to another. So there are lots of crimes that we commit as mathematicians, that we make things vague, we choose terrible notation, and so forth. So I just want to make this very simple statement as clear as I can, is that there is only one kind of derivative in the world, in the simple world, where you're not overcomplicating things. Again, I'm not telling you the correct point of view, I'm telling you a point of view. What I'm telling you is a valid point of view. It doesn't supersede other points of view, but, but sometimes you want to fall back on a simple point of view, and I'm giving you that simple point of view. The only kind of derivative that you can take is with respect to a, to a single parameter. So there's no such thing as the derivative with respect to a vector, derivative with respect to a function, derivative with respect to this or that. There is only derivative with respect to a simple parameter. So let's live in that simple world where functions can, the values of functions can be either numbers or vectors. They all depend on a single parameter and we can take the derivative with respect to that single parameter according to this definition. Although this is a formal definition, but like I said before, I picked it because of the essential ingredients that are in it. 